Hi guys, this is Eric Cressy. We're at Cressy Sports Performance, and today I want to talk to you about specificity of training, delayed transmutation, and what it means for uh, long-term baseball development. So um, I think the concept of specificity is a really important one to understand. We certainly want to select exercises that are going to give us the best carryover to high-level performance in the baseball world. So obviously there are going to be certain things that carry over better than others. But we have to kind of understand that there's this entire continuum of non-specific to specific training initiatives. Obviously throwing a baseball that's five ounces is going to be about the most specific thing that you can encounter. Whereas on the non-specific side of things, this is going to be a lot more of your high volume weight training, things along those lines that, that build this general motor potential, um, put on strength, put on size, and you hope these are the things that are going to carry over to allow you to throw 95 or improve your prop time or, or hit a baseball further. So. These are all things that we consider and what we appreciate is that the volume of these uh, non-specific exercises may come down as the off-season progresses and we get closer and closer um, to the baseball season. Obviously we want to do more specific work. So if you look at specificity on, um, on this side of the curve versus month along the bottom, what we realize is if you use the example of a minor league baseball pitcher, they're wrapping up right about now and getting into their off-season. Obviously, the, the volume of specific training is actually going to be very low. Most players don't want anything to do with baseball by the end of the season. So we're going to give them a time where we give them a break from obviously throwing, but we're also probably going to give them an initial adjustment period where maybe they take some time off from sprinting. They don't do a whole bunch of aggressive med ball stuff where they're rotating or training at a high velocity that might beat them up a little bit. So it's an opportunity to get very, very non-specific early in the offseason. So if we're looking about the uh, amount of specificity in our training, um, it's probably going to be the lowest in the September and October period and it's going to start to ramp up as guys start to throw in November or December and obviously they peak where maybe it's not just long toss and weighted balls here, maybe it's a lot more mound work, um, things along those lines. And then what's going to happen in our supplemental training is once these guys report in February or March for spring training, what's going to effectively happen is we're going to drop off the amount of specific training because they're already getting plenty of that work in their actual sport participation. So instead, we keep our, our volume up with respect to the non-specific exercises, but we don't need to do a whole bunch of extra long toss, weighted ball, stuff like that during the season for guys. So this is kind of like the ideal curve you want to see, but there is going to be some variability about it. And what we have to understand is this concept of delayed transmutation. This was introduced by Vladimir Zatsky-Orsky in the Science and Practice of Strength Training. And what delayed transmutation really is, is just taking that general motor potential that you build with a lot of those less specific exercises, and we want to transfer them into sports performance. So if we've got a career big leader who's thrown 200 innings five, six, seven times, has really been through the ropes, this is probably going to be a smaller pool. Um, we might be able to push a lot of this stuff further along in the offseason because the big league season ends a little bit later and maybe we know it doesn't take him quite as long to find his mechanics. Maybe he's already got elite arm speed, high level performance, so we can work in a much smaller window there. Conversely, maybe our minor league players need a little bit more time to understand this curve and take that general motor potential and build it into specific sports performance. That's all well and good, but we have to appreciate that there are going to be uh, examples when we got to get outside um, our normal approach. In the example of an athlete who may be on the brink of being released or really may need to take a big jump in velocity, he may just need to spend a little bit less time in you know, total workload in the non-specific realm and get specific sooner. So maybe that athlete's curve looks a little bit more like this to make things work. In other words, he needs to audition and sign for a team, so he needs to get specific a lot sooner. Um, certainly that's a scenario where we're going to acquire a lot more risk in our training. We know that throwing a baseball is probably the single most specific injury mechanism you'll encounter in the sport and world. We want to repeat our mechanics, we want to do things consistently, and the more you deviate from that, the more trouble you're probably going to get into from a performance standpoint. So with these athletes, we know that if we're going to push the envelope on the front side, we're probably going to have acquired a high level of fatigue on the tail end that puts them at more risk of running into some problems. Because you can't just keep adding without taking away somewhere else. So in their case, they acquired more specific exercises in their training, and they had to reduce the amount of non-specific. But what I want to speak to also is how this impacts what happens typically in the college game. 
we have to appreciate that one of the struggles of the collegiate year is that there's a lot of ramp up, shut down, ramp up, shut down. So athletes really kind of rotate back and forth between these periods of high specificity and low specificity. Example being, you know, with fall ball, the amount of, of pure specific training that they're going to do is actually really, really high. So they spend a lot of time up here. And then many of those athletes get shut down once Thanksgiving rolls around and they take three or four weeks off and then they're expected to bounce right back up into their season workload to be prepared. And then what happens is the second they get in season, the last thing we're doing is a lot of extra throwing um, in addition to what we get in games. So their workload actually comes back down from a training load standpoint. Um, and then this entire cycle may stay consistently low as they go through summer ball. And then we get to July when they shut down and that curve comes back up. Um, just because we're ramping up for fall ball once they roll in the end of August. So effectively what you're dealing with is a lot of peaks and valleys and it's one of the things that makes development in the college world really, really challenging. It's why you see some athletes who do really, really well when they just take a leap of faith and decide to shut down for a summer and just train um, and try to build some continuity into their throwing program. Maybe it's an elite arm that takes the fall off and he just does a more gradual ramp up to the spring to almost replicate what we see in this pro side of things. So one of the things that I speak to a lot with our athletes, um, whether it's direct or indirectly during their evaluations, is we need to evaluate what you need from a non-specific versus specific um, exercise selection standpoint. And we also need to figure out um, you know, what time of year we're gonna do those things. Maybe we're gonna push it a little bit more with a guy who's struggled and is on the brink of being released or not making that next level. Maybe we need to hold it back a little bit more when it's an advanced athlete who's had some career success and doesn't need to take those same level of risks. Um, so just give you an appreciation for how to plan your year out um, and certainly it's a it's an important kind of reference point um, for athletes who may have been struggling and not making progress the way that they need to. Typically what you don't want to see is a lot of hills and valleys from a development standpoint because it doesn't really allow you to highly train one motor quality um, and really you know, develop the opportunity to transfer that motor potential into specific sports performance. So hope you found this useful and uh, definitely try to put it into action with your training.